Hi everyone, in this video we are going to walk through the steps to create an interactive video resource. We will also talk about some best practices for creating and using that type of resource. And lastly, we'll take a look at what that resource looks like on the learner side. So I have just logged into my regular account. The landing page is your Active Classrooms page. Since we are going to be working on content building or content creation, we need to head over to our library by clicking library in the upper right hand corner of the screen. We're going to select my content since I will be the one building this content and it will be in my library. Here I am in my library of all the content that I have built all the way from courses down to questions and rubrics and resources. The interactive video resource can be added to an existing course and collection, just like you would normally add any other resource. You can also build the interactive video resource on its own and add it to a collection or a course later on. So we are actually going to take that second option and build the interactive video on its own, but let's quickly take a look at what it would require to add the interactive video to something that already exists. So I'm just going to click into this course, Navigator Teacher Training. I'm gonna scroll down and click on the unit, the lesson and the collection I want to add the video to. And just like you would with any other resource, when you click the new resource button, instead of adding a URL or uploading the file, you're gonna click interactive and select interactive video. So you can add it to a collection that already exists. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna take us back out to the library so we can build uh, the resource on its own. So to do that, I'm going to click the blue create button and then click resource since the interactive video is a resource. And I get that window we just saw. I'm going to click interactive and interactive video. I have my interactive video editor or workspace here. And the very first thing that we are going to do is add a title. I do want to point out that there is a tour available and it will walk you through the different components of this interactive video workspace. I highly recommend going through this. It's pretty quick and it's really helpful. Even if you need a refresher and it's not your first time building one of these videos, the tour button is up in the upper right hand corner of that window. Let's give our resource a title. I encourage you to follow the same titling that you use for resources. So if you say resource one and then the title, if this happens to be the fourth resource in an existing collection, follow the same titling that you've used throughout the collection. Since I'm not adding this to a collection and it's existing on its own, I have a little bit more freedom with the title. So I'm just going to call it NASA going to the moon. So I've got my title. And the next thing I need to do for an interactive video is add a video. You get a little bit of information here about what types of video files are supported. You can click the plus button and either upload a video file or you can just paste a YouTube link or any other video source URL. I have a video here. It's from NASA. So I'm gonna copy the URL and I'm going to paste it in. Just be mindful of copywriting and licensing if you are using external material. Click insert, and I can see that the video is loaded. That's great. And you have an option here to edit the copyright information. So you can change the title, add in the author, the year, source or license code, the license type and license version. So all of that can be added. And again, that's really important if you're using external material. Before I start adding interactive components to this video, let's look at some of these other settings. If I click on interactive video, I can see that the title that is given to it by default for metadata is just interactive video. That's not terribly useful. So I'm just going to copy my resource title and paste it in here. You can hide the title on the start screen. You can add a description, poster image, text tracks. I'm gonna leave all of this alone. We have some behavioral settings that you can adjust for the uh, video resource. So you can start the video at a specific spot. If you don't like the first 45 seconds of the video, start it at 46 seconds in, it'll be automatically done. You can have the video autoplay. As soon as the user interacts with the resource, they don't have to click a play button, it just goes. 
You can loop the video so it plays over and over again until the user leaves the screen. These show solution and retry buttons are related to the interactive questions that we're gonna be talking about in a bit. And you have some other options here like deactivating sound or showing button for rewinding. I do wanna draw your attention to this setting here, prevent skipping forward in a video. This can be really helpful if you have younger learners or learners that are a bit more likely to just skip through the video resource and go right to the question so they can get through it as quickly as possible. If you really wanna make sure your learners are watching the resource and answering the questions, you can check this off to prevent them from moving forward. This can be really helpful for students that have some difficulty staying focused or on task. I would caution you to be mindful of how you use it with adult or older learners as it does remove some autonomy and it can cause a bit of frustration. Just be mindful of how you use this particular feature. It can be very helpful in some cases. I'm going to leave it as is. And then our last group of settings here that we can adjust are text overrides and translations. So I don't have any overrides right now, so I'm just gonna leave all these settings alone. And my next step is to add interactions. So the whole purpose of the interactive video is to take a video that your learners would just watch and actually embed activities and questions into the video to make it an interactive, more engaging experience. Let's add some of those interactions. I can see the video. This is from the tour, so I'm gonna exit. But again, I recommend if in the earlier videos that you're making, if you need a little bit of a reminder to just go through this tour as it's really helpful. I can see the video. I can see all the controls here. I'm gonna turn the sound off just for the sake of all of us as we create these interactions. But I also encourage you to make sure the interactions are re relevant to the resource that your learners are watching. I am going to make sure the questions I ask are related to how we are going to the moon and not something totally unrelated. The experience will be engaging and feel meaningful for your learner. Up across the top here, we can see all of the different types of things I can add onto this video. We've got our basic stuff like a table, a link, images. I'm gonna leave all that alone. I'm more interested in the question types. There are tons of question types and lots of variety, like marking the words, drag and drop, fill in the blanks, and then more under these three dots here. I'm gonna do my best to show you a couple of question types, but I really encourage you to explore as much as you can. You're not gonna break anything. If you create a question and you don't like it, just delete it after the fact. I'm going to play this video, the sound is off, but I'm just gonna click play. And as I watch and I listen to the video, let's say I get to this point and I think, okay, I think this is a good spot for a question. Let me add in a question. I think I will add in a multiple choice question, the old standby here, multiple choice. So I'm gonna click on that. I can have the question stay on the screen for 10 seconds. I'm actually just gonna have it pause as soon as the question comes up. So I want the video to stop, the user to answer the question, and then the video to proceed. So I'm going to click pause video, and I'm going to set this to just be the same time. So it really just displays and pauses and then goes away once it's answered. You can have it stay on the screen as long as you want. You also have the option to have the question display as a button or as a poster. So we're gonna start with button and I'll show you a poster, but you have a good description here. A button is a collapsed interaction that the user has to click on to open. The poster is already expanded and it just lays right on top of the video. You can add a label which would be displayed next to the button. So let's just call this question one. I encourage you to remain consistent in how you label these items. Then we need to give a title for the purposes of metadata and searching. So let's call this NASA moon question one. You have options here to display the question, optional media. I'm just gonna leave it alone. And then I'm gonna add in my question. You type your question text here. I hope you have a better question than I do. You can change the font, the size, all of that, and then you're gonna add in your options. Let's just type in my options. Let's say two is the correct answer. I'm gonna mark it as correct. I wanna have four choices, so I'm gonna to click to add. There's choice three and choice four. 
For each one, you can add tips and feedback. So for example, if the student reads this question and they select one as their answer, you can provide hints. You can provide a, a message to be displayed if that answer is selected or a message to be displayed if that answer is not selected. So you have lots of options to provide immediate feedback to students, even if it's just, hey, you picked item one, remember to think about blank and try again. For this question, response two is going to be the correct response. Okay, so I'm gonna come back down. I have a little bit more to fill out. So here it says overall feedback. By default, the range is from 0% to 100%. What message do you want your learners to get? I am actually going to add a range here and say from 0% to 99%. So basically, if you get it wrong, I'd like my text to say, try again. And if you get it right, we'll say, great job. So there really is only one score here that indicates that the student got it right. That's 100%. Unless they get it right, they're gonna get the message, try again. If they get it right on the first try or on the second try, it'll say, great job. You can break this up into as many ranges as you want by clicking add range, or you can have it distributed evenly. Let's come down a little bit more. We have behavioral settings. You can allow the student or learner to retry. You can allow the solution to be shown. So I'm gonna take that away. I want the user to have to retry the question if they get it wrong, but I don't wanna show the solution. I want them to figure it out on their own. You can randomize the answers, um, require the answer before the solution can be viewed, automatically check the answers, the pass percentage. There's lots of options you can play with here. For adaptivity, the action on all correct, you can bounce the learner to a specific time in the video. So if a student answers something correctly on the first question and you think they can skip the next three minutes of the video, you can set that here. So action on all correct responses, enter the time code of move the student to three minutes and 15 seconds into the video. You can add a message or a label for a seek button. I don't have any desire to add that to this particular question. For action on all wrong, you can have the user have to back up and look at something again. What I am gonna click here is re require full score for the task before proceeding. If you leave this blank, which is the default, the learner can just click a response, be notified that it's wrong, but still move forward. I'd like to build in a little bit more accountability than that. I want the response to be correct before they're allowed to move forward. So I'm going to check this off. And again, that's under action on all wrong, under adaptivity. That is entering a question. I'm going to click done. And here's my little question button. So here's the title we gave it, the label. You can have it appear anywhere on the screen. So I'm just gonna have it appear down here. And let's, before we see what that looks like, fast forward a bit and let's add one more question. Let's pick a different question type. All right, so I think this is a great spot after having watched this video, this is a really useful spot to add another question. Let's pick a, hmm, what do I wanna pick? I'll pick a free text question, so a free response question. I'll have this one appear as a poster. So we just had our first question appear as a button, that little question mark that appeared. I'll have this one appear as a poster, which means it just lays right on top of the video. I only want it to show up immediately. And then once it's answered, I want it to go away. I'm gonna leave pause video on because I want the question to be answered while the video is paused. I need to title my question. I'm just going to title it question two because that's the format I've been following. I'm going to type in the question. So if you could go to the moon, would you? Why or why not? So this is to show that you don't just have to have machine gradable questions here. You can actually use free response questions as well. You can change the placeholder text. I'm fine with it just saying enter your response here. You can put in a maximum score. And then again, very similar to what we checked off before where the correct response is required before the user can move on. I want to have a response required in this case before the learner can move on. So because this isn't machine gradable, the machine's not gonna know whether or not their typed in response is correct or incorrect. But at the very least, we can require them to type in an answer before they move on. So this basically prevents them from skipping the question and just trying to get through the resource as quickly as possible. 
I've added that in. I'm going to click done. And this is what it looks like as a poster. So remember when we came back here, our first question was a button. So it just appears as a little question one button and notice the video pauses. And then for question two, it appears as a poster and the video will also pause, but the poster lays right on top of the screen. So as we approach that and the questions are marked by these little circles, the student would enter their response, click answer and proceed. So let's say I make it all the way through the video. I've added as many or as few questions or interactions as I want. The last thing that we need to do, if you want to, is add a summary task. This is optional. So you can save right here and have a perfectly fine interactive video resource. Let's just quickly take a look at that summary task. Okay, so it's an optional summary quiz that appears at the end of the video. This is another place at the very end of the resource to ask some summarizing questions. So you would type in your title, you would add in some of those statements and have the learner have to pick the correct one. And again, you're defining the score range, you're displaying how soon before the video ends this would appear, and it's the same exact settings as before. I'm going to skip the summary task. Again, it's a, another great way to ask summarizing questions using the same formatting as you did with your regular interactions. I'm going to click save and let's take a look at what this looks like for a learner. It's in my resources now. Here it is, NASA going to the moon. I'm going to click play to preview it. I could click the pencil icon right here to edit it more. And I can click this plus icon to add it to a collection or a course that I already have. I'm just gonna preview by clicking play. And you should note that this preview is slightly different than what the students will see in terms of sizing. On the students or learners page, there will be a navigation study player on the side and the interactive resource will fit perfectly on the screen. So no scrolling is required. So as I scroll up and down here, that is not required for any of your learners. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to mute it again as a fake learner here. I'm going to play the video. And remember, we did not turn on the setting to prevent skipping forward. If you turn that setting on, the user cannot drag this forward. For the sake of time in this video, I'm going to just move us forward to our question so we can see what that looks like. If you remember, we're approaching question one, which we created as a button. There we go. This was the brilliant question that I typed. It's randomly shuffled up my answers. So let's pick four as my correct response. Notice that the video pauses. There's no way to move forward. The only thing that the learner can do here is click check. They wanna check their answer. Here's that text I put in where it was, if the student gets it wrong, their response is try again. I've enabled retrying and notice there is no solution visible. So I'm gonna retry. It's reshuffled the answers again. I'm going to pick this one, click check. And I get my text here that says great job. And now I can continue and the video continues to play. For the sake again of this video and showing you the second question we added, let's drag this forward a bunch. As this loads and renders, I do want to encourage you to use a variety of question types and intersperse as many or as few questions and interactions as you'd like or as you think would be suitable for your learners. So here's that free response question that we added. If you could go to the moon, would you, why or why not? We would expect our learner to type in a coherent response, unlike the one I'm typing. And they have their normal text editor options here, and then they can answer and proceed. And remember, we turned on the function that they have to answer something before they can move forward. 